so then in the munitions factory, they were making anti-aircraft artillery cannons. The finished product, I remember, they had covers for it, and they had these giant zippers. It was all zipped up and covered up out in the open, the ones that were finished. Well, we made parts that fitted somewhere into this on um, lathe machines, which I have never seen in my life until that moment when they ushered us into this. It was like a hangar, um, very large building full of machines, one next to the other. And um, it was going day and night. In the daytime, the Austrians and some prisoners of war, war worked there. And we have the night shift. We worked at night. So um, they had to show us how to do this work because I really didn't know it. And I remember when the foreman took me and stood by the machine and showed me and explained how to work it. Some of the pieces we had to make a uh, hole in it with the machine and it made a spiral uh, thread inside. And So he showed me how to do it. And I caught on quickly, I guess, and he said to me, have you done this kind of work at home? And I was just thinking, yes, here I was uh, not yet 15 years old, and he asked me if this is the kind of work I did at home. So I was doing that, and my brother was an um, implant messenger, and my mother was a finisher, because these little pieces uh, on the edge were rough, and she had to file them, make them smooth. So that was her job. A lot of standing, too, standing up. And of course, my job, you stand by this machine. The food, well, b being that the Germans are so practical, I think they figured out probably by the exact number of calories to feed us so that we just stay alive, but never to feel, well, I had enough, never. We were always hungry. Uh, it was mostly soup, some vegetables, uh, such as turnips and squash and things like that. And once a month, a slice of horse salami, which the Orthodox Jews wouldn't eat, of course, and they traded it for bread or soup or something because they would not, no matter how hungry they were, they would not eat that stuff. But the thing we appreciated about the place was that it had bathroom, not to take a bath, but to wash yourself, and they had toilets. Well, by now, this was a luxury that we really appreciated. So I became a good lathe worker and uh, learned a little sabotage because I just, it bothered me that here I'm making these pieces and this is going to cannons that, uh, anti-aircraft artillery that maybe shoot down some of the Allied planes. It just bothered me, but I had to do it. So they had these big bins with the work that the, uh, they shift finished. And these were all good, faithful Austrians, so I knew that that has to be good. So then after a while, I learned how to make it not exactly to specifications, because we had a gauge, and we had to constantly measure that it was couldn't be a millimeter off. So I learned how to do it. And then I didn't want to leave it. That's my work, because if they check it and they are all the wrong size, then they kill me, so I would put them among the daytime shifts um, work, and theirs I put in my output so that uh, everything would be okay. And yet I would have that little satisfaction that 
I didn't do my best. I didn't want to do my best. Uh, in all fairness, I have to say that the people who were supervising us in this factory were fair and decent. They were all Austrians. No one went out of their way to cause us extra misery. In fact, I remember there was a foreman who would bring extra food. Um, they did bomb it a lot. Um, after a while, all the windows were blown out, and since they had a blackout, they had this big black curtains. Well, there were no more windows, but the curtains were still hanging, and it was winter, and the wind was blowing, and uh, it looked like some the wings of some otherworldly bird is curtain would blow away into the place. One of the things that was the worst uh, that we suffered from the cold. So the bombings increased not only in frequency but in effectiveness. And strangely enough, and I don't really see any um, divine design in this, but before it was all over, every building in this factory complex was in ruins, except the building we lived in, which was lucky, I guess. But during the time when these bombings took place and we would go down to the basement and um, come out an hour or hour and a half later, and we went down when the sun was shining and it was daytime and we would come up and we thought it turned night because the smoke and the darkness, the sky turned black and smoke was all over. So while we were working in the cold in the factory, then another um, little development happened which made us happy. We would go to the foreman and ask for uh, another supply of uh, this iron rod, whatever we needed for our work, and he would say, I'm sorry, we don't have any more. Well, that was great. We were happy to hear that. And I also want to mention that some prisoners of work war worked at night, and they were, whenever they had a chance, they broke the machines on purpose and made them inoperative for long periods. And I